Something bothered me in Spider-Man No Way Home, something I couldn't really get out of my head. Spider-Man is fighting regular people, mostly, uh, and they aren't going down like a sack of rocks in the first hit. Why wouldn't they? He's got the proportional strength of a spider, right? And the thing that's wild is that happens in almost every Spider-Man movie, almost every comic, almost every video game. Spider-Man's power is a lot greater than he ends up getting credit for. Uh, so today we're going to go into what the proportional strength of a spider truly means. Buckle up, because this gets a little bit crazy. I'm Dan Umpton, and this is the Doomcast. Hey, so before we get started, do me a favor, hit subscribe and the bell so you don't miss anything. Uh, I make about one of these videos a week and they're all great, so thanks for subscribing in advance. Uh, every once in a while I like doing these where you're, you know, tinkering with the math and the science behind a hero. One of the earliest videos that I did was what the Flash has to eat based on calories burnt or the actual weight of Thor's hammer, but this one is something else because I think this is already pretty well established in comics already. What do I mean by that? Let's talk about the proportional strength of a spider. A spider has the proportional strength of about 250 times greater than that of a human being scaled to its size. And when I say strength, I mean lifting strength. Like, the strongest spider in the world apparently is called Darwin's Bark Spider and is about half a gram in weight, but can lift 80 grams proportionally, uh, which is huge. That's roughly 170 times its own body weight. So what does this mean? Like, if you're fighting a peer, Miles, Gwen, or Ben, a serious, like very trained peak performance boxer is going to throw a punch with between 750 and 1,000 pounds of force, roughly closer to that 750 on average. Uh, if we assume that Peter learned to put his hip into it and really float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, or bite like a spider, um, then that means that the low end, if you multiply 750 pounds of force by, let's go with the 170 times even though that's body weight. Uh, if you're hitting an opponent with that, that means it's an equivalent of 125,000 pounds of force, which is the weight of 30 cars. I mean, and I'm using the 170 times your body weight instead of the 250 times uh, the strength of a human being scaled to its size, because if you're using the 250 times, that's ridiculous. The problem is here, I don't think you can quite calculate the force of a punch that way either, accurately. And I'm sure I have the physics kind of wrong here because ultimately force is mass times acceleration. So for a human body and one fist or the entirety of a person's arm to have that proportional strength of a spider is impossible, which yeah, it's a fucking comic book character. Uh, but like the human muscle is made of fibrous tissue. You couldn't send an electrical signal to your muscle fibers from your brain to make them twitch fast enough to strike even close to that hard. But Peter can because he's fictional. But that's not why we're here, right? Uh, which is to say that if his upper limit is hitting people with the force of like dozens of cars or even a dozen cars at once. We're not talking about a guy who one-shots any normal human being merely to unconsciousness. A man whose fists are named sleep and slumber, nay. A man who would punch any single normal human into a fine red mist, like Omni-Man taking on a full subway car of humans. And the thing is, I'm not exaggerating this, because they show the proportional strength in movies in everything but his fighting. Stopping a full train with webs and rotations rotator cuffs and pectoral strength alone. In Homecoming, stitching a fairy ship together with those self-same pecs of glory. In video games, he steps on moving cars and webs buildings together just to hold that car and stop it solidly right where it's at. That spider bite has to have essentially altered his muscles on the most basic level. Real spider limbs are basically hydraulic goo inside of an exoskeleton, goo that squishes back and forth, but still goo. Uh, human muscles are made of these fragile tendons connected to these stupid porous breakable bones, which are uh, white blood cell factories also. So any spider person's joints, ligaments, and muscles have to be massively fluid filled, but also impossibly uh, sinewy and super, super, super uh, high on tensile strength. Otherwise, how do you web swing? In the recent Devil's Reign, Ben Riley gets hit with a power restrictor as he 
leaps from a building, spoiler alert, uh, although he fires a web to slow his fall, his shoulder gives out from the force, severely injuring him and dropping him directly onto a uh, onto the street below in a car. Of course, Ditko was the first to clearly demonstrate this strength on the page. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 33 is a great example, where a nearly broken Peter tears himself from under what is clearly tons, multiple tons, plural, of machinery to free himself from a collapsed sewer uh, to save Kurt Connors and then Aunt May. But if he's so strong, then why doesn't he just blow people like Doc Ock into a wet pile of red spooge? Well, Dan Slott hit on this exact thing in The Superior Spider-Man, in which Otto, his mind now in Peter Parker's body, discovers he has immensely more physical power than he believed Spider-Man to even have. And then he realizes in that moment that Spider-Man was always pulling his punches, never ever striking anywhere near his full strength, knowing how awful it would be if he truly let go. And that's a thing that the great Spider-Scribes are always aware of whether it be movies, video games, TV, or comics. The thing that people need to remember is Spider-Man's always pulling his punches. Whether it's Peter, Ben, Miles, or Gwen, it doesn't matter. They know that that great power comes with great responsibility because without that, the insane amount of self-restraint and determination to do the right thing against any other odds, they would be a greater menace than any of the foes that they regularly face. And of course, that's where the real power lies. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Appreciate you. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe. Come back and check me out next week.